you haven't had crack slaw, you're missing a really great low carb one dish wonder. We love one pot wonders at my house. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken about a pound and a half of ground beef. You can see it's not lean beef. It's um, actually uh, 73, or um, I think 73% fat. There's a lot of fat in the skillet. It's not um, made any better by the fact that I added bacon grease. And this is my, um, it's actually a pickle jar. This is my bacon fat. Whenever we bake bacon at my house, we save the fat and I cook with it. I use it for just about everything because it's a really wonderful fat. Um, so, crack salt. I've got the beef browned, and I haven't added anything to it yet. But as soon as I get the beef browned, and the heat's still pretty high, I add my seasonings. I start by adding, in this case, some diced onion. I like to use the dried onion because, or the dehydrated onion, because it adds um, more flavor as it picks up the fat. Now, use the onion um, for your discretion, and you can use fresh onion if you like. Onion does have carbs, and onion is optional. You don't have to put it in. I'm actually putting about a tablespoon of dehydrated onion, uh, a little more. And again, I like this because it picks up the fat as it hydrates and gives it a lot of flavor. Okay, after the dehydrated onion, I'm going to add some salt. Ever since we went low carb, I've wanted more and more salt. Um, I'm going to put about a half of a teaspoon and just sprinkle it in. You can add more, but you can't take out. I'm also going to use some of this Thai kitchen. This is roasted red chili paste. It is about six carbs per tablespoon. So you don't wanna use a lot if you're very, very low carb. This is primarily for my family, so I don't worry so, so much about those carbs. That was one teaspoon, generous teaspoon. There's a second one. All together, it's about three teaspoons, which equal a tablespoon. So I'm gonna add that in as well. In addition to the uh, roasted chili paste, get all that goodness in there, give it a little bit of a stir, because I do have it, like I said, on a pretty high heat. Um, I have also added, and this is totally up to you again at your discretion if you want to add it, but I've added some toasted sesame oil. I did about a teaspoon. It gives it that rich, nice sesame flavor, but it is optional. Some people don't like to use sesame oil because it is a PUFA, a polyunsaturated fat. So if you don't like it, leave it out. You won't miss it. Ginger. We love ginger at my house. And so I'm going to add about a, table, a teaspoon. That's a half teaspoon. So let me do another one. Uh, very generous. And this is just um, chopped ginger. Now, if I had more time, I do have fresh ginger, and I could certainly grate fresh ginger in there, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm just doing that to clean that ginger off the spoon. The last thing I'm going to add, the last seasoning I'm going to add, is garlic. Now, again, I don't have any fresh garlic. I prefer to use that. I'm actually going to use about a half tablespoon, I put too much on my thing, of fine garlic powder. And I keep this on hand as a staple. Oops, I put the whole thing. Well, it'll be garlicky. <laughs> you can um, put more or less of the seasonings as you like them and based on your family, on their preferences. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of that out because I don't want it too, too garlicky. So, I put in toasted sesame oil, I put in chopped ginger, I put in some salt, I've added garlic powder, and I've added um, minced dehydrated onion. One more thing that you're going to use whenever you're making crack slaw is coconut aminos or soy sauce. Now, I don't like to use soy sauce because it is wheat based. Um, I really prefer to use coconut aminos. It is on the pricey side. You can get it at Amazon and other places. I had never, ever, ever used coconut aminos until we went low carb, and I love them. It has a kind of a naturally sweet flavor, uh, but it is very much like soy sauce. It behaves that way. And you want to put just enough to give it a nice season, seasoning. I'm putting about two tablespoons, and I'm going to add more as we get this closer to done. 
Last thing I'm going to add, last ingredient, is cabbage. If you haven't used cabbage in a low-carb way of life, cabbage is wonderful because it's a great substitute for noodle. And what I've done is I've taken one fairly large cabbage and chopped it up. Um, ideally, it would be in strips about this size. And as you put it in, it's just going to fall apart. You don't want it too big. You really want it more bite size. So there are some big pieces in here, and I'll probably chop those up before I serve it. Um, and my skillet's getting full, so I may not add all of this. But you're going to use roughly one half to two thirds of a large head of cabbage. So I started with about a pound and a half of ground beef. I added um, dehydrated onion, toasted sesame oil, minced garlic, uh, red chili paste, which is optional, and toasted sesame oil, which is optional. Now, I'm going to link to a recipe in the comments that inspired this, but my recipe is a little different than what she uh, uses. There are several, if you Google, there are several recipes, and I've never had bad cracked slaw. So this is going to cook down for a while, for a little bit, and as soon as the cabbage is tender and cooked down, um, I will, I'll serve it. It will be ready to go. Now you can also add, if you like things spicy, and my family does a little bit, you can also add some red pepper to this, um, just to give it a little more heat. You also can add sweetener. Now I have a liquid sucralose, which is what our family prefers. You could put um, some, uh, well, I don't use Splenda at all, but you could put um, some Swerve or other sweetener because it does make it, um, just give it a nice flavor to have a little bit of sweetener, not too much. And you cook it down, and you can see that I've got it on a pretty high heat, and the cabbage is getting cooked. So, when it's tender, your crack slaw is ready to be served. And I love to just do this in my big, heavy cast iron skillet. Um, one of the wonderful things about crack slaw is it makes fantastic meals. It makes several meals. It heats up really nicely. It's something that my son, my daughter, and my husband both enjoy taking for lunches. And I actually have a friend who uh, likes to eat crack slaw for breakfast. She says that she just pulls it out of the fridge and enjoys it that way. Now, let me give you a bit of a warning. The reason this is called crack slaw is because it is absolutely addictive, but it's quick and it's easy uh, for your low carb meals. Enjoy.